Hey everyone, Brian Henderson here with Liberty Laundry. This is the third video in my series of videos about how I use SketchUp to design our most recent laundromat. Let's pick up right where we left off. Okay, so in the last video, I showed you how to draw a basic shape in SketchUp, how to apply the face of the washer to that shape, and then also how to save it as a component and how to import other components into your model. In this video, I'm going to show you how to move those objects around, how to import components from the 3D warehouse, very handy for um, when you're designing. You don't have to draw every last little component in your uh, design. You can actually take advantage of things that other people have made. I also realized that I've neglected to show how I'm moving the camera around in SketchUp. And this is, you know, uh, teachable through uh, a lot of uh, tutorials, uh, on YouTube or through the uh, help uh, menu in, in SketchUp itself. But basically what I'm doing is I'm using the pan tool, which allows you to move it around like that, and then the orbit tool, which allows you to orbit the camera around. A couple of quick shortcuts, say I'm using um, just the select tool at any time, I can click down on the scroll wheel of my mouse to use the orbit, or if I click down on that scroll wheel on my mouse and I hit the shift key at the same time, it allows me to pan around. So you'll probably see me doing a lot of this. So scroll wheel, just clicking that down to move that around. Scroll wheel, scroll wheel and shift button to move around like that. Okay, so say I've got these two items and I've got a 60 pound washer and a 20 pound washer. I know from the manufacturer recommendation, you want about a quarter of an inch in between the equipment. So I'm going to select an item using the select tool. I'm then going to use the move tool or I'm going to click M to bring it up. To move it and you can as you get close to corners and edges you can see how it snaps right to there I'm zooming in and out using my scroll wheel you could also use the magnifying glass but I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to click on this corner of the machine and now I can move it around so let's say I wanted to get it right next to this machine I could click the corner here and it's going to snap right to that other corner and now I've got them smushed right up side by side, but I want a quarter of an inch in between them because I know that's where I need them to be. So I can just click this corner and slide it to the right. See that green line? That's moving along an axis. If I were to move this direction, see how it goes red? Let's move along another axis. If I was to move it straight vertical, well, it's not going to in this example, but that would then be the blue axis and that's the, the Z axis. But in this case, I'm going to move it to the right exactly a quarter inch. Now I could try to move it, and you see how it says the length in the bottom right corner. I could try to very carefully get it on in there, or I could just simply type it in. I can either type in 0.25 inches or one quarter inch. I'm going to do 0.25 <clears throat> inches, enter, and now I know that's exactly one quarter inch away from that other machine. If I want to move both of these together now, I could simply use my select tool, click and drag to highlight both of them, and now click M on my keyboard, or choose the Move tool, to now move these on around. Because I have them like this, if, say I wanted to rotate the whole thing around, if I right-click it with my mouse, I can choose Make Group. This, see how the box changed? And now it gives me the option of moving this all together. I can click right here and just rotate the whole thing. It, it snaps to these different um, angles, or you can do anything in between. but Say I just wanted to move it like that. Say I'm done moving around, I want to make it not a group. Well, the terminology for that in SketchUp is called explode, which I like. So now they are separate individual pieces and you can select them individually. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about importing um, different components. As I mentioned in the last video, I've created quite a few components for my own use. Uh, it's going to be sketchupfiles.skp and I've drawn different things, TVs, washers, dryers. Um, here's a stack, 45 pound stack dryer that I created. Well, let me rotate around here. There it is. So again, I just looked up the dimensions on the manufacturer's website, created a geometric shape, a big old box as the right size. I took an image from their website and then I applied it as a surface onto this box. Looks pretty compelling, doesn't it? Pretty realistic. Realistic enough, anyway, and it's dimensionally accurate. Now, 
say you don't want to draw uh, every last little thing, um, you probably noticed in my other model that I had some house plants and in the bathrooms I had some toilets and those are fairly complex shapes to draw, not like washers and dryers which are just big old boxes. Well, you can go to File, 3D Warehouse, Get Models, Share a Model, Share a Component. Let's say Get Models. This takes you to the 3D warehouse, and this is one of the greatest things about SketchUp. Hey, right there, there's a toilet. Let's say we want to bring a toilet right into our model. Load this directly into your SketchUp model. Sure. Just hit yes, and just like that, you have something you can play around with. And so you can rotate it. All of that. Pretty handy. Why would you put a toilet right next to your machines? I don't know. It's your launch mat. Do whatever you want to do. Okay. That was the point of this little video, and uh, stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching.